universal background checks. It's just common sense. It's time to say enough. In America, on average, nearly 12,000 people die every year. 900,000 are arrested each year. And a full one-third of those are repeat offenders. It's time to say enough. To end this carnage, universal background checks must be required, regardless of the mode of acquisition, by purchase from retail shops, retail stores, wholesalers, distributors, private sellers, special events, shows, commercial establishments, private clubs or organizations, by gift from friends, by gift from family, no exceptions, no loopholes. Don't be fooled by opponents claiming lawful use saves lives. Such claims are pure hype. So restrictive effects of universal background checks won't prevent any saving lives through lawful use. So it's just common sense to require a universal background check before anyone can buy or accept as a gift any type of alcoholic beverage. It's time to say enough. View the statistics. The numbers are grim, year in and year out. 2009 was typical. All statistics are from the federal government, i.e. CDC, NIH, or NHSTA. Links to sources are at politicalxray.com slash universal hyphen background hyphen check dot htm. Here's a set of scales for weighing factors for and against universal background check regarding alcohol in 2009. 10,750 DUI deaths. 707,330 DUI injuries. Thus, absent counterweighing factors, the DUI carnage overwhelmingly weighs in favor of barring anyone from buying, receiving any alcoholic beverage without first passing a universal background check to show he or she is legally eligible and mentally suitable to drink alcohol responsibly. No doubt you're saying to yourself, this is one of the dumbest ideas I've ever heard. But unless you believe big alcohol has brainwashed you to think so, ask yourself why you know it's really a bad idea. Isn't it that you know the loss of liberty would be too high a price to pay to empower government to impose such a universal background check to reduce the carnage from DUIs? If so, then you recognize the positive value of liberty outweighs the terrible burden of the carnage that inevitably occurs when a small minority of people exercise their liberty irresponsibly or dangerously by driving under the influence. Well, then, let's consider the Bill of Rights generally. Seems to be rather heavy. It obviously outweighs the carnage of the 10,750 deaths and the 707,330 DUI injuries, so it must have more weight than they. But would this type of analysis produce a similar conclusion on gun control proposals for universal background checks? Let's see. Here you have another set of scales. These scales will weigh the factors for and against universal background checks for firearms using comparable reasoning applicable to alcoholic beverages. For purposes of this chart, the term FMU means firearm misuse, which includes criminal use and negligent use. 11,473 FMU deaths, 66,768 FMU injuries. Now let's Add in on the opposite side, as we did for alcohol, the weight and value of the Bill of Rights generally. But there's more than just the Bill of Rights at issue. If we're talking about firearms, what else might there be? Ah, the Second Amendment right to bear arms, a specific constitutional right, unlike the general concept of the Bill of Rights generally. If we add that in, what happens? It adds a lot of weight. 
It certainly is as great a weight as the, the Bill of Rights generally. It's a specific amendment for a specific form of liberty. Now, what's this? Defensive or life-saving use of firearms 240,000 times a year? Who would believe that? Well, that's actually from a government study that concluded that the number was approximately 470,000, way more than 240,000. And in fact, other studies have shown the figure to be much higher than the government estimate of 470,000. But to be very conservative and fair on this, I reduced it to 240,000, which is much lower than it really is. Instances in which possession and use of a firearm serve to prevent a crime or save someone's life constituted a defensive or life-saving use, of which there were 240,000. And of course, we should place those on the right-hand side. Now what do we have here? What about the defensive or life-saving effect of drinking alcohol? Are there any statistics anywhere that allowing drinking helps people save other people's lives or prevent crimes? I don't think so. If so, the number is not statistically significant in any event. So it's useful to point that out since we're at the point of considering the defensive or life-saving use of firearms, which are without a doubt established. If we release the braces, look what happens. The weight is overwhelmingly against the concept of universal background checks for firearms. Because to impose such restriction means that no one could acquire a firearm at any time without, at the moment before acquisition, the person would have to undergo a background check. Whether he was receiving it from a relative, a friend, a parent, a son, a daughter, a brother, a sister, a next door neighbor, someone they know to be a trustworthy person, or even one's own spouse, regardless of the circumstances. Honey, thanks for buying me a gun for protection when you're away, but I can't accept it since I'm not certified mentally suitable by the background check board, so I'll just use scissors. You cannot resist this transition. You cannot resist this transition. You cannot resist this transition. It would be necessary to get government permission before transferring a firearm under any circumstance. That's what universal background check really means. We certainly wouldn't do that for alcoholic beverages, but it's obvious the misuse of alcoholic beverages causes far more mayhem every year than firearms. And we would never say, Every time you want to buy a drink, you have to undergo a background check to see whether or not per perhaps just within the last few weeks you had a drunk driving conviction or some other problem. No one would do that. They would say, we'll tolerate the carnage because the price of liberty would be too high to require those background checks. If we can understand that common sense principle in the context of alcoholic beverages, which save no one's lives, why can't we understand that same principle? In the context of firearms, which, unlike alcoholic beverages, are actually protected by the Constitution and actually are used hundreds of thousands of times each year to save lives or to deter crime and cause less carnage and mayhem than does the misuse of alcohol. Thus, isn't it overwhelmingly obvious that we should not require universal background checks for the acquisition of firearms. To oppose universal background checks is not to oppose all or every kind of background check. Indeed, we already require background checks for virtually all commercial sales of firearms. Do criminals or people adjudicated to be dangerous or unstable nevertheless acquire firearms? Of course they do. No system is perfect. But to demand perfection in law enforcement is to demand a totalitarian system. To infringe upon a fundamental constitutional right, not being abused by 98% of the people who exercise that right, in order to prevent abuse of that right by 2% is a form of totalitarianism. Does any of us who genuinely values liberty want to even contemplate a proposal to empower the government 
to determine the mental suitability of American citizens to exercise particular fundamental constitutional rights. Isn't that what they did in the Soviet Union? If you doubt it, ask someone who lived there. Or better yet, read a concisely informative, artistically illustrated book by a former Soviet citizen at ShakedownSocialism.com, who's also the brilliant inventor of the People's Cube. Indeed, wasn't an oppressive relationship between the power of government and a citizen's state of mind an important theme of the movie Minority Report? If we value liberty, shouldn't we resist, not support, such transition?